no party like a Democrat party because a Democrat party don't start. We're going to be going over everything DNC with Zach Payne. It's going to be a fun one. You're not going to want to miss it. Buckle up and get ready to make sense of the madness. now joined by Zach Payne. Zach, it has already been too long. I'm accustomed to seeing you at least once a week, week if not several times a week. P.S. Back to two hours on my show. Got to get you back in a slot, my friend. I'll be <laughs> there. Get you, you just back. let me know. <laughs> All right, we will be talking about it, but we're also going to be talking DNC. Now, look, very painful. It's hard for it's hard enough for me to watch the RNC, yeah, there's some moments, but like I got to keep a bucket next to me when like Pompeo takes the stage, right? Uh, at the same time, you know, when I look at the goofiness in there and the hats, it's goofy. This one's really tough. It's it was past couple nights have been extremely nauseating. Now we're gonna go over a, a few of the all stars uh, playing their old hits again. You know, when it comes to Joe Biden, I it was. It's he's on repeat. He doesn't know where he is. He's crying when he gets out there. We'll get to all that. But but let's break it out into Hillary Clinton. Now, first of all, her appearance, and, and again, I don't like to dig into the appearances, but they had her done up in so much makeup and plastered out to get so many of the wrinkles out there. And we're gonna play this video. It's the lock him up chant. Let's hit the clip. Donald Trump fell asleep at his own trial. And when he woke up, he made his own kind of history. The first person to run for president with 34 felony convictions. As vice president, as vice president, Kamala sat in the situation room. Now, first of all, and the, I like the the mask shot at the very end there. I also like the skinny dude that looks like maybe he's 135 pounds soaking wet with a mustache that is all too ironic for myself. They couldn't even get the chant right, right? Like that, like there was a moment when they interrupted her. Okay, you you started off. It felt like it was going to go strong. It never got to that Trump 2016 crescendo of every single crowd chanting "Lock her up." Now, at the same time, uh, the original cackle monster, uh, who's now been superseded by Kamala Embarrass, Hillary Clinton, did have that little smirkle on her face. She was enjoying her time there. Uh, the scary thing is, is that that woman has committed global war crimes on a scale most people can't imagine. When crowds of people were talking about locking her up, there was legitimacy to that. However, there was no trial. There was no way that was actually going to happen unless, for some reason, Donald Trump did keep his word, which immediately after being elected <laughs> said, calm down, we're not really locking anybody up. So that was off the table. In comparison, this man has endured several show trials at this point, uh, has been taken to the cleaners. I mean, if you just take the judgments and the legal fees alone for over a billion dollars, <laughs> And, as she stated, has 34 felony criminal convictions that are still set to be sentenced in September, which nobody are talking about. So when I see a crowd like that actually saying it, even though, again, they don't have the fervor or the hype, the reality sinks in on me that, you, wait, this is still happening. You know, this is something I've been talking about for a very long time, and it, it's kind of a a dark revelation in my mind. What are your thoughts on that? And then Hillary's appearance in general. Well, first of all, now after that performance at the DNC, when you look up the definition of the word gloat 
online, you're going to find a picture of Hillary Clinton. I mean, she had such a satisfied, smug look on her face, despite the fact that they never reached that level of fervor or, or the excitement, the pitch that was reached at Trump rallies when we were saying lock her up. I think that your assessment of the situation is 100 percent spot on. You know, people like me were not screaming lock her up at Trump rallies simply because we didn't like her policies or we didn't care for her ideology. Uh, we wanted Hillary Clinton to be locked up for the very real crimes she committed during her time in public service uh, and even her times probably when she was just the wife of uh, jolly old Bill Clinton down in Arkansas. I mean, Hillary Clinton is a criminal mastermind in the same way that Joe Biden is a criminal mastermind. Now, she has perhaps a better control on her faculties, and she has not uh, deteriorated in the same way that Joe Biden has. But Joe Biden presided over a criminal network that was made up of his family. Hillary Clinton presided over a criminal network during her time in public service uh, that was mixed between perhaps not only her family through the Clinton Foundation, uh, but also the people working for her on her campaigns, uh, working at a variety of uh, private agencies, uh, working within a series of federal agencies as well. So the rationale to lock up Hillary Clinton has a real world basis in fact and precedent. The rationale to lock up Donald Trump is based on mean tweets and the fear that the Democrats and even the Republicans that dislike him. So let's just say the deep state in general the fear of the deep state that Donald Trump may return and might actually make good on what they've done to him, the very thing that he refused to do when he was in office. I mean, he said, we're not going to pursue this legal action because it's petty. We've beat them at the ballot box, and so we're just going to move ahead and we're going to fix the country. We're going to show America that we have better ideas and that we have a, a better understanding of what it takes to run a nation and bring us out of the depths that they have uh, plunged us to. So now here we are, three and a half years of the Biden regime, uh, three and a half years of suffering for every single American if you're not a member of the ivory tower elite. And these people are supporting the Democrats simply because they are afraid of what Donald Trump might do. And to be frank, Jason, they deserve everything they get. If and when we return Donald Trump to the White House, if they do decide to proceed in a legal fashion against these people, then it's fair game. All bets are off, and they deserve everything that they're going to get. Well, let me say this. I want to see it on both sides of the aisle, if that is in fact the case, because there are plenty of people uh, mm -hmm. on the conservative end. I'm sorry. Bill Barr needs to be investigated. They all knew about yeah. that laptop. You know, oh, yeah. the problem is that Bill Barr was more than likely the fixer in the Epstein case, and we both know that, you know, Trump has been extremely hesitant to really embrace that aspect since 2016, right? And I think rightfully so, because he knows he has real connections to Epstein, even if they don't involve uh, pedophilia. I don't know if you've seen the Rogan Peter Thiel uh, three and a half hour interview, but if you have not, it is, a, not. It is a must watch. It is one of the most over the top, wasn't ready for it, surreal experiences because Rogan's sitting there talking to Thiel, and they're talking Epstein for a good hour and deep state and all this stuff and how mm -hmm. Thiel's uh, totally obsessed with it. And I'm going to be a little spoiler. At one point when they're kind of like debating on the deep state, and they talk about a lot. They talk about the Trump assassination. They talk about JFK. Uh, the only thing they really didn't get into was 9-11, by the way. <laughs> and you know who Thiel is. And it oh, seems yeah. like Rogan and him have a real relationship for that. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, Rogan goes, yeah, I guess we're going to need some kind of like – investigative journalist, someone like a Whitney Webb to fetter it all out for us. And Thiel's sitting right there. Whitney and I, I have had public conversations on air many times about Peter Thiel in a very <laughs> negative regard. She's written about him many times. Thiel must be aware of this. The subject gets moved. It, it just shows you how weird this whole deep state thing is. And who are you going to prosecute? I, I say this. This is what I'm saying. You want to hold true to that? Let, let's forget about naming names and making things political before the fact. Let's down the line, release and declassify all the JFK docs, the RFK, the MLK, and especially the 9-11 documents and start mm -hmm. there and start there. And, and look, 
any of these agencies where someone went rogue, et cetera, and still had the resources, even if their superiors weren't aware of it, they need to go. We, we need not only transparency, but accountability. You know, we, we brought up Hillary Clinton and the fact that she had all these crimes during her administration. I want people to understand that the Clintons were brought in because they were criminals. Yes, All right. exactly. I mean, even in, uh, you know, the public arena, back when I was a young man, I remember Whitewater. Now, mostly Whitewater was corrupt land deals, run-of-the-mill type stuff for high-level government officials, bureaucracies, licensing, et cetera. And as you said, back when Hillary Clinton was a lawyer, one of the things that makes me want to puke in my mouth when I hear these people talk, they always talk about how they defend children, right? And how they were lawyers for good. No. You know, you look at who she worked with, Vince Foster and Webb Hubble and what they did. There's a tape of Hillary Clinton cackling about getting mm -hmm. some monster off for molesting a child. Very yep. young child, by the way. Anybody? It's out there. You go, you go decide for yourself. But when you look at the two other individuals I just named there, let's say they were totally innocent. There was really no financial corruption. Remember, this is before Hillary's even in office, everybody. Mm -hmm. And obviously it dealt with Bill as he was coming into office in the beginning of his presidency. I'll say this on the record. Come sue me, Webb. Uh, you know, I just uh, I just got billed for my E&O insurance anyway. Webb Hubble is the uh, father of Chelsea Clinton. 100%. Yes. Not, yes, there's 100%. no doubt about it. But it's, it's, it's not doubtful. OK, on top of that, Vince Foster ended up dead in the woods and allegedly, al supposedly suicide uh, <laughs> and Double allegedly tap. also was having sexual relationships with Hillary Clinton. OK, now. That right there, that might be debatable. There is biological DNA evidence of Webb Hubble because Chelsea Clinton is his biological daughter, hands down. Now, yeah. this was okay because Bill Clinton had numerous other women, Jennifer Flowers, again, known before he was elected. And, you know, there are reports to this day that he uh, fathered an illegitimate black son. And, and that person claims it as well. I don't know whether that's 100% true. I can tell you Jennifer Flowers is 100% true. So you are dealing with high level, at least local corruption, that gets brought up into the next level of global corruption. And really, that's what Hillary Clinton stands for. And that's why it's not just her you have to go after. It's not just the Comeys and the McCabes. It's the entire system, Zach. Well, Jason, don't forget about the boys on the tracks and the CIA running cocaine through MENA Airport. I mean, that couldn't have been done without Bill Clinton's knowledge and approval. And uh, allegedly, he and his brother were big fans of using cocaine. That's one of the reasons they thought that that would be a great thing to do. But it also brought in a lot of money. And it secured Bill Clinton's place within the echelon of the deep state. So by the time he decides, hey, you know what, I'm going to run for president. He's the kind of guy that they want inside that Oval Office because he's the kind of guy that can be controlled. He's already been compromised. He's already proven himself to be a worthy ally of the global intelligence apparatus. And so, yeah, that's not a problem at all. And then, you know, that's not even to bring in all of the many, many, many bodies surrounding Bill and Hillary Clinton. We haven't even talked about the billions of dollars that just went missing, poof, gone from Haiti. I mean, how many schools did they build after raising $10 billion? How many homes did they rebuild? How much infrastructure did they build back up? I mean, it's not any at all. Like, it's a total big fat zero. But everybody involved with the Clinton Foundation and the Clintons got very, very rich, completely ripping off the people of Haiti and ripping off the people of the world. I mean, these people are criminal masterminds, and that's the reason that they have remained at the upper, upper levels of power in the global stage. Yeah, but it's time for their swan song at this point. And speaking of swan songs, I guess that's what you would have to call angry Joe Biden at the DNC on the first night before he was fettered away, not just from the conference, but the state in general. Bye-bye, Joe. Not there. Night two, everybody. Take that break. We're going to come back. We're going to be keep kicking it with Zach Payne with more Making Sense of the Madness after this.
the world is about to shift. Banks are going cashless globally with the emergence of central bank digital currency, which will bring with it programmable money and the ability to turn on or off your purchasing power based on your digital social profile. It's like the equivalent of spyware in your bank account. You need to get out of the system with the world's safest and most precious assets, silver and gold. Call Kirk Elliott Precious Metals at 720-605-3900. That's 720-605-3900. Looking to give your wardrobe an upgrade? Well, look no further. Here at God Country and Kin, we've got you covered from head to toe, from shoulder to shoulder, and everything in between. Introducing our brand new Patriotic Collection, designed to display your patriotic spirit with a stylish look that's sure to turn heads. And the best part is, you don't have to break the bank to be your best you. Why wait? Visit us online or in-store today and elevate your style with God Country and Kin. God Country and Kin, where patriotism meets style. Shop now. Visit the Patriot TV store and look for the God Country Kin banner to find the perfect outfit, shirt, accessory, or maybe a great hat. You can totally see yourself rocking this hat. I know you can. And check out all the great stuff we've got to show your patriotism at patriot.tv. Dot store. Click that link above that says store and join me there at the Patriot TV store. And we are back. And Zach, here's the deal. Uh, I'm a human being. I get things wrong. When I get things wrong, I admit them. I didn't think there was a snowball's chance in hell that they were rolling Biden out for more than 15 minutes. Well, they did, and it was a huge mistake once again. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think I clocked him, what, at a solid 40? Something like that? Yeah. It was, It was a, you know, for him, that's going off the rails. Now, Marathon. And it was seriously. Now, he had the lockdown jaw for the whole thing. When he stopped talking, he looked like a confused extra on the set of The Walking Dead or a spinoff <laughs> thereof of the series. Um, and there was a moment when he was talking about the electoral power of women where he just didn't know where he was again. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, he was again at that moment looking around like, holy snippet, what the, what the fuzzle snut? <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no way he had any idea. He slurred through most of the speech, but they clearly had him hyped up. They gave him the drugs that they didn't in the debate versus Trump. Um, that didn't stop him from getting confused. They had him all Botoxed out and makeup up. It's tough to watch. But one of the more disturbing aspects of this whole thing is that, you know, this idea that Ukraine and Russia is a good thing and that we should be involved in escalating this thing. Yeah. And the, um, the amount of pop that got, that's concerning. So we're, we're going to play this clip of Biden talking about that moment uh, from, listen, again, I got it wrong. I didn't think he'd do more than 15. He went a strong, senile Biden 40. Let's hit the clip. We united Europe like it hadn't been united for years, adding Finland and Sweden to NATO. <laughs> Ten days before he died, Henry Kissinger called and said, not since, not since Napoleon has Europe not looked over their shoulder at Russia with dread until now, until now. Well, guess what? Putin thought he'd take Kyiv in three days. Three years later, Ukraine is still free. Look at that one. Hey, I'm in a flower dress. They're still from. Hey, by the if all those free Ukrainians, there's about a hundred to two hundred thousand less of them. They're they're mm -hmm. real free now. They're free from their car payments if they had any. They're free from their homes. <laughs> they're free from this earth. All right. And I'm sorry, I'm not a death merchant. I think that's disgusting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the fact that Joe Biden invoked. Uh, Henry Kissinger and all those people uh, cheered, not only shows how detached he is, but how detached those people are from the political arena. You remember in any recent moment, especially in the Democratic moment, Henry Kissinger being <laughs> embraced? I mean, you really probably have to go back uh, to uh, the Barack star days where that was okay, right? I, I mean, mm -hmm. Kissinger, 
even during the Bush era, a lot of people didn't love it. And Kissinger was behind the scenes supporting Obama, but there was, you know, that never that outward thing. And one of the things that uh, Trump was heavily criticized for by his base were those meetings with Kissinger, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, that gets a pop, this idea of freedom in Kiev. Look, the only reason that they haven't overtaken that is because we're giving them the not only amount of military uh, weaponry communications. We have special forces on the ground. We know that there. And we've escalated it such where there, there's the real possibility that Russia realizes if they take it too far, I think, even if Russia is not the first one to use a nuclear strike or something similar, the United States might just fake it, right? Like, yeah. let's say that Russia did decide to... Uh, attack a U.S. aircraft carrier somewhere in the region. It's a possibility, right? Maybe mm -hmm. shoot down. Yeah, we we got to remember, you know, during that Syrian period, even, uh, you know, first when Barack was there, Russian soldiers and U.S. soldiers didn't always get along, and they killed each other. And you even had that one incident under the Trump administration where they kind of had to sew things up. And then that was the end of ISIS, right? Right after all those Russians were killed in the target. Okay, now we, we got to clean this up. If we if they did that aircraft carrier, that might be enough to spark a World War III. But even more so, the U.S. might just solidify it with some type of false flag, and that's an end game, man. We we none of us know what like a physical um, you know war with Russia would look like. But I can I can guarantee you this: there'd be fighting in the United States as well. It's not just going to be on that front. Yeah, I, I think that the one thing we can be certain of is that there's going to be a lot of dead people on both sides. You know, it's funny that you mentioned the false flag because I just read this morning that Joe Biden has just uh, put his uh, cabinet and others on guard for potential thermonuclear war uh, with uh, with Russia and China and maybe North Korea. You know, I, I think that the reason that we haven't seen a... Um, uh, a, I guess a, a tragic escalation of this conflict so far is, is because Russia sees what the end game could potentially be. Uh, I mean, the United States has provide have, has provided not only weaponry uh, but also physical manpower to Ukraine. Uh, NATO uh, through their uh, Operation Gladio leftovers. I mean, they have continued up this fight in the wake of re Ukrainians dying on the battlefield. Uh, and they've even struck Russian targets inside Russian territory. I mean, Jason, can you imagine if the United States was involved in some sort of skirmish like this with another country and an ally of that country, say Mexico, okay? We're perhaps uh, gonna go to war on the Southern border. The drug cartels and the, uh, uh, the, the army on the Southern border are getting into clashes. Uh, and then the drug cartels using uh, a javelin missile from one of the people that we are aligned against shoots El Paso, okay, or shoots a military base down there near the southern border. I mean, we would immediately jump on board and it would be a full scale war. It would be a hot war and many, many people would die. I mean, I have a lot of respect for Russia in this in this instance because they haven't really done much of anything. And the investigation into the uh, the pipelines, uh, that has shown that there's really only one obvious answer besides everything that we've learned up until this point. But the CIA, NATO, Ukraine and the United States are the ones who are responsible for that. And now Germany is requiring Ukraine to make payment uh, on those pipelines, all the money that they've lost. But Sergey Lavrov has said, hey, you know, it's pretty obvious that this was the United States that did this. I mean, that is a major, major escalation, big terrorist attack on the infrastructure of a foreign nation. I mean, the fact that we have not escalated this war beyond the point that we're at right now is frankly stunning to me. And the closer we get to the election, I think the more likely it is that something will probably happen, whether it's organic or it's a false flag, because that would be the perfect reason that this administration would have to perhaps suspend elections, just put everything on hold, guys. We're at uh, war with Russia, and so we're not going to be able to have the elections right now because it's just too precarious of a time to do a peaceful transition of power. So, you know, you brought up the pipeline, 
And I would be remiss if I did not mention that within, I think, the last couple of weeks, there's been a new story out there, supposedly um, with one of the people behind that attack on the Ukrainian side. And they're saying they did it on a whim. They were drunk. <laughs> and they said they were going to do this midnight mission or something like that. And they scouted it out. didn't take much. Listen, I'm not saying that's total fiction. There may be some truth to some of it. I don't know. But it sure sounds like a false narrative to try to um, mitigate the evidence of U.S. intelligence, a.k.a. NATO, et cetera, involvement and pin the blame solely on some drunk Ukrainians within their military it really passes the buck. And because we live in a post-truth world, if you will, where nothing really gets investigated and everything from the truth to the absurd gets reported as fact right? It's hard to really make of what actually happened there. What do you think is going to happen via Ukraine and Russia before not only November, but January when whoever is sworn in? And, and let's say Trump gets in, in uh, or, or gets voted in in November, and it can't be stolen. Is that where we have to be hypersensitive to what happens in December and January to ensure that hopefully Trump can get in there and and hopefully, like you said, have those talks with Putin and others that before he even steps in day one, this conflict stops. I think the messaging has already been sent. And, and whether it's uh, Vladimir Zelensky or Vladimir Putin or any leader of any nation on planet Earth, they know that if Donald Trump returns to Washington, D.C., then this conflict is going to end. Because any support financially in terms of weaponry from the United States to NATO, to Ukraine, that's going to end. All of those forces that we have on the ground, they're going to get pulled. Um, I would hope that uh, Donald Trump would also uh, uh, completely excise the CIA from the federal bureaucracy, thereby neutering any intelligence power that we have over there in Ukraine right now. Just get rid of them. Get them out of there. I think that Donald Trump returns to office and peace returns to Europe, uh, stability returns to the world, and people are going to stop killing each other and, uh, and just immediately resorting to this. Likely, the eastern portion of Ukraine is going to go to Russia. Uh, they are already breakaway republics. They do not want to be part of Western Ukraine. Uh, and Russia would then go back to offering them some sort of military and strategic partnership so that they don't have to worry about being attacked. Uh, but I think that that's the only way that this conflict ends. And uh, the thing that really scares me is that they know this, they understand that Donald Trump would mean uh, a peace broker, not only in Ukraine and Europe, but also in the Middle East, and they would seek to escalate it in whatever way they can so that when they do the transfer of power, they're gonna hand Donald Trump the biggest pile of crap that they possibly can to make it as difficult for him to solve those issues. And then, you know, perhaps there's the, the fear that throughout a majority of his, his administration, he would then be dealing with brokering all of these various peace deals and trying to bring that stability back to the world. And perhaps he wouldn't have the time necessary to devote to what we have to solve here in the United States. We got to take a break. When we come back, we're going to continue with the DNC hits and beyond another banger of a show with Zach Payne. More making sense of the madness after this. What if this happened to you when you're alone? Or what if it happened here? With MedGuard Alert, you're never alone. You can connect with medical professionals anywhere, anytime. And now MedGuard is introducing our exclusive new CareWatch. If you need help quickly, use it from anywhere to contact medical professionals. No cell phone required. The CareWatch is not only a life-saving medical alert device, it's a revolutionary health monitoring system that checks your blood pressure, heart rate, oxygen saturation, duration, and much more. And here's the best part. If you have Medicaid, you may qualify to get your care watch for free. The care watch is only available through MedGuard Alert. Call us right now. We have monitoring programs starting as low as a dollar a day. The call is free. Activation is free. Shipping is free. And no contract is required. Remember, with Medicaid, you may qualify to get your care watch for free. Don't wait. Call us to get your care watch right now. Operators are standing by. I don't know about you, 
But I have to have that cup of coffee in the morning. And Kingdom Cup is mold-free. It is pesticide-free. And it is organic. It's got this flavor that is delicious. You don't even have to put cream or sweetener in it. Why do we go with the bean form, the whole bean? Because ultimately the powder form is the one that gathers the most moisture. And that means the more potential mold development. This is actually organic, mold-free certified. That's important because ultimately people drink coffee, it's cultural. And so we try to uh, meet the culture where it is and create a healthy alternative. Make the healthy choice for you and your family. Try mold-free, pesticide-free, and it's organic. Delicious Kingdom Cup coffee. And it's available now at the Patriot TV store. Go to patriot.tv and click on store. You'll find Kingdom Cup coffee in the health and wellness section. Order Kingdom Cup coffee at the Patriot TV store now. And we are back with Zach Payne. Now, this brings us into the next night. And Michelle Obama, there were a lot of hardliners out there that, you know, up until even like a couple weeks ago were saying she was still going to be the person. Even when Kamala was first introduced, there were thoughts. Now, uh, I watched uh, both her and the Barack star speech, and we're certainly going to get into his. Uh, but she, you know, I, I think she gave what? About 30 minutes. Pre pretty strong speech, you know, like they, it was pretty vapid for sure. It was the do something. It was the chant a lance. Uh, well, we're going to play this clip right here where she's talking about basically how her parents raised her not to trust rich people. And, and, and I want to dive into the irony of that after we hit this clip. You see, my mom, in her steady, quiet way, lived out that striving sense of hope every single day of her life. She believed that all children, all, all people, have value, that anyone can succeed if given the opportunity. She and my father didn't aspire to be wealthy. In fact, they were suspicious of folks who took more than they needed. They understood that it wasn't enough for their kids to thrive if everyone else around us was drowning. So my mother volunteered at the local school. She, she. Now, there's a couple things there. First of all, when she says that everybody around her, first of all, if everybody else uh, isn't surviving, she says, wasn't drowning i think it was like a freudian slip she meant was drowning yeah it was weird but you look at the barack star on boats with the clune george clooney and rubbing elbows with dicaprio and having multi-million dollar homes in several areas it, they might have a little more or too much <laughs> so like is she revealing that she's become the thing that her parents hated i mean Again, these people talk to us sometimes like we're totally incomplete idiots. Now, the speech overall, the vapid messaging, et cetera, didn't go too over the top, the inclusion, very much the, the play up on diversity, sure. But it was this moment where it was just too much uh, of a dark overture of over the top. It's like, wait a minute, aren't you the one dancing on Ellen for fame and, and getting a huge kickback for it? Like, it, it just didn't strike me as based in reality, Zach. No, it wasn't at all. I mean, don't forget the multi-million dollar book deals, Jason. I mean, both she and Barack have been paid handsomely for their public service. And the real irony is that Michelle Obama's family was upper middle class. Michelle Obama went to a private school, which was predominantly populated by white children. Uh, she grew up in sort of a gentrified environment. She wasn't from the streets of Chicago. She grew up in the suburbs. Okay, so her and her family had more than enough money to do what they needed to do. But as they grew up, Michelle Obama and Barack Obama both uh, dipped into that pool and took far more than more people. 
ever have, okay? And now they live on the banks of Martha's Vineyard uh, in a palatial estate where, unfortunately, their chef recently drowned. I thought that was kind of funny, too. Uh, but the real irony here is that it does seem like Michelle Obama was describing herself and all of the other elites that populate the upper echelons of D.C. high society. I, I mean, these people are that which they seek to destroy, allegedly. But what they really want to destroy is the lives of every man, woman, and child, all of the plebs, the average people in America. And that's patently obvious when you look at the policies that they're trying to espouse and the policies that they've implemented over the last several years. You know, I, I too thought that there was a possibility Michelle Obama might end up being the candidate at the end of the day. Kamala Harris is adult OK, she is not a popular candidate and she's really pretty bad when you put her out there without a teleprompter. And I've heard recently that she might have a drinking problem. I don't know. I haven't witnessed it myself. But here's the thing. In the same way that Barack Obama didn't need to run for a third term to control Joe Biden's administration, I don't think Michelle Obama needs to actually run for president to control a Kamala Harris administration. I mean, the only reason that Kamala Harris was able to get to the position she is is because she received the ultimate endorsement of Barack and Michelle Obama, who are essentially royalty in the D.C. Beltway. So I, I tend to believe that Michelle and Barack would be just as hands on inside of a Kamala Harris administration as they were inside of the Joe Biden administration. Um, I don't know how they feel about Kamala Harris on a personal level. I understand that they really had a lot of tension with the Bidens. Um, but uh, I mean, anybody who is uh, potentially going to be able to do the things that they want them to do, I think that they're going to keep that connection open regardless of whether or not they like them on a personal level. Well, let me say this. When you, you look at the whole situation with Michelle Obama, I think it is apparent that the people that were reporting on the other side that she really didn't want to be involved in politics and didn't have a taste for it are more than likely correct. I think, in fact, like you said, you talked about the book deals. What about the movie deals? Remember mm -hmm. uh, the, the Netflix deals, the producer oh, yeah. deals? I think that she gravitates to the hobnobbing. In fact, I, I was watching NBC's coverage yesterday, and one of the things that they were like openly, she likes the glamour. They like mm -hmm. the glamour of Hollywood. They like that sort of stuff. So she was much more comfortable in that arena. And, and that's what this felt like. I, I think that the DNC also realized that the RNC felt like much more of a concert. They tried to bring that uh, atmosphere to their little John. Uh, what, what is it? Give out for waltz or whatever. How dare you, little John? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it was a good paycheck, buddy. I, I get it. But geez, my my goodness. Like you're you're literally like endorsing miniature gremlin Biden. Like if you if you rolled Biden back about 15 years, you shrunk him down and made him wider. That's pretty much what Tim Walls looks like. Totally another subject matter. I expect it. Listen, I expect kind of a limited role from uh, the Obamas if Kamala Harris gets in a bigger role than they had with Joe Biden. You know, there was really no tours out there. And I think that really gets to uh, the Barack star, which we're going to get to his video in the next segment. But uh, you know, I, I liken his performance last night to uh, a rock band that hasn't been around in a while and they haven't put out, an, you know, like Tool. <laughs> Tool sometimes will take like eight years for an album. You don't hear much from them. Every once in a while, they'll do a festival, but there's no big tours in between the albums. There's some side projects, right? Right, Obamas? <laughs> but he came out there and he gave, I mean, for you know, a, a campaign that nobody really is excited about. Nobody gives a rat's ass about Kamal Harris or Tim Walls. He made it sound like they were the best thing since breakfast. He gave a sermon on the Hill like no other. And for me, uh, th this was beyond the greatest hits. This was the greatest hits with a couple new singles and a remix for everybody we're gonna take a we're gonna take a quick break we're gonna come back we're gonna play a clip from that we're gonna get zach's take on it it's making sense of the madness final segment after this
Did you know that thousands of authors across the country have written books and published them with Page Publishing? If you've written a book, Page Publishing can help you through the process. We cut through the confusion of the publishing world to make it easy for you. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art, we get you printed, distributed, and sold on Amazon, Apple iTunes, and in bookstores across the country. We'll even help you promote your book. That's right, we do all this for you. Biography, self-help, mystery, novel, sci-fi, even a children's book. No matter what genre, Page Publishing can bring your book to life. Call today for your free author submission kit and find out how you can be the next published author at Page Publishing. Call for your free author submission kit at 855-993-2114. That's 855-993-2114. Throughout history, the spirit of patriotism has prevailed. The battles may have changed, but the values remain the same. Today, in 2024, we find ourselves at a pivotal moment where the call for unity, freedom, and a better future echoes louder than ever. For more than 10 years, Patriot Mobile has been committed to supporting the values that make our nation great. With affordable plans and reliable nationwide coverage, Patriot Mobile is not just a wireless service. It's a call to action for those who believe in the American dream. Because this year is not just any year. It's the most important year since our nation's founding. Choose a wireless carrier that shares your values. Choose Patriot Mobile. back with Zach Payne. So Zach, again, I'm just going to play the clip. This is a small clip, and then I'm going to get your take on the Barack star. Let's hit it. Here's a 78-year-old billionaire who has not stopped whining about his problems since he rode down his golden escalator nine years ago. It has been a constant stream of, of gripes and grievances that, that's actually been getting worse now that he's afraid of losing to Kamala. There's the childish nicknames, the crazy conspiracy theories, this weird obsession with crowd sizes. It, it, it just goes on. And on and on. The other day I heard someone compare Trump to the neighbor who keeps running his leaf blower outside your window every minute of every day. Now, from a neighbor, that's exhausting. From a president, it's just dangerous. So, uh, number one, we got the peony jokes in there. That's always good. A, a Barack, I, listen, I don't know if he's a size queen, folks, but I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> just saying. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. All right. We'll have to ask Look, Larry. <laughs> listen, yeah, you'd have to ask Larry Sinclair and others. Apparently, allegedly. Allegedly. Here's the deal. When he talks about Trump... And he talks about the childish nicknames. People love that stuff. You know, I, I've talked about it before. You know, that actually is embraced by Americans. When he talks about the conspiracy theories, the man almost had his head blown off <laughs> a month and a half ago. I mean, literally six weeks ago, almost had his head blown off. There's new video of crooks walking around that doesn't fit the timeline. Weird. But we're talking like conspiracy theories don't exist we're also talking about imagination land that you have a neighbor that uses a leaf blower every minute of every day hey it might happen on a sunday morning which is really effing annoying it ain't every day all right enough of that so again he did well in his performance but every single one of his points was to me completely irrelevant and really inverted in nature and one of the things overall 
about the whole thing is it, it really strikes me as crazy that nobody's even acknowledging that this guy almost got shot in the head. Six, It's like it doesn't ex- exist. So what are your thoughts on all that? Well, I mean, you know, the thing that uh, you forgot to mention, Jason, is that many people on the left were actually pur- uh, purporting to uh, espouse the conspiracy theory that Donald Trump wasn't even actually shot or, or that if a bullet did graze his head, that it was actually something that was orchestrated by him so that he could get more clicks on Instagram or something like that. I mean, talk about conspiracy theories. I don't care how good a sniper is. I don't know anybody that would feel comfortable in allowing a 300 blackout round to go that close to your head and graze your ear just so that you could get sympathy from the masses. I mean, it's absolutely insane. Ultimately, what it showed to me is is what the Democrats have been doing for the entirety of Donald Trump's place in, in public life. Since the moment he walked down that escalator, they have been obsessed about attacking him on so many irrelevant things because they cannot attack him on policy. If they really wanted to show the American people that their ideas were better, then they would do this convention. They would talk about how they're going to fix the problems they created because they've been in power for 12 out of the last 16 years, or they would put forward some policy plans and platforms that would show exactly how they're going to fix the things that have gone wrong, perhaps because of Joe Biden. But Kamala Harris is is inextricably tied to Joe Biden. The policies that the Democrats have espoused uh, have led us to the situation we find ourselves in right here. So the only thing they can do is to attack the man. It's ad hominem attacks. They cannot attack him on substance. They cannot attack him on policy. So they're going to go after him for these childish little things. I mean, you know, I don't care that Donald Trump calls people names. One of the reasons I voted for Donald Trump was because he wasn't a politician. That's what drew me to him. I know what politicians do in Washington, D.C., and the ultimate example of that is Joe Biden or Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton. I mean, these are some of the worst people in the world as far as I'm concerned. I'm not voting for these people because they have bad ideas, because the policies that they want to implement in the United States of America are dangerous because they are antithetical to a constitutional republic. And they would have you believe that this isn't even a republic. It's never been a republic. It's always been a democracy. And Donald Trump is a threat to that democracy. And so they have to attack him. They have to use these tactics of belittling. They have to make little jokes like that. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's beyond ridiculous. But, you know, you mentioned Biden and we'll go to Barack in a minute and what you thought about the overall speech, because, listen, I I do think I mean, even in that whole thing, he's playing it up. You know what I mean? He's 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 got everybody in the palm of his hand. It's well rehearsed. It's well done with Biden. He again, he broke out Charlottesville. He broke out very fine people. He broke out tiki torches and people coming out of the forest again. Every time I hear that forest thing, I'm just like, it's they weren't in the woods, Joe. <laughs> it's like they're outside of a hotel. Like I just it's it's it boggles my mind. But again, Joe Biden kept to all the same things that we've heard over and over and over again the few times that he has stepped out there. And I, I'm gonna say again, he did 40 minutes. That might have been if not his longest, it's definitely top five in the line mm-hmm. in four years. It's top five of him speaking publicly. The tears, the Ashley Biden all over the top. With Barack, it it, it did. It, I mean, again, he went probably for about 40 minutes as well last night. He didn't, I don't think he did a full hour. He, did, he didn't go Trump style at, at all, but he had the group for the entire time, whether he was talking Johnny nonsense or a lot of the things he was saying were baseline. You know, allowing other people like libertarian in nature, you know, under the guise of, you know, we love everybody and we accept everybody, et cetera. I I thought, honestly, they were two contrasting speeches where Joe's sitting there screaming, I will never bend the knee to Putin. (laughs) Like and slurring his speech. You know, when Barack's yelling, he's not yelling at the audience. He's yelling in a manner to get the audience to yell and cheer with him. So what were your thoughts? So Joe Biden is like fire. Barack Obama is like ice. Okay, you rile him up at the start and then Barack Obama comes in and smooths things out and it makes the way for Kamala Harris to come in there and have a couple of laughs. You know, oh, look, you know, we have these two extremes. Here's Kamala Harris. 
and she is more, uh, I, I guess, just, you know, uh, just like a, a regular person, I suppose, as compared to those people. You know, she can laugh. Great. OK, she has jokes that she makes about her mom. Uh, she's also a person of color. She's a woman, uh, even though it's quite clear that they didn't really want to talk about women outside of that stage at the DNC. But Barack Obama was his typical self. I mean, he is a smooth move. Like every single time that man steps in front of a, a camera or a microphone, uh, he, he's got a persona and he turns it on. And uh, more than anything, it felt to me like a, a eulogy for Joe Biden as much as it felt uh, as a, a takedown of Donald Trump. And then that led into the idea that Kamala Harris is going to beat Donald Trump and she's going to fix the problems again that these people have created. Barack Obama is an actor, as far as I'm concerned. I think this man has been playing a part his entire life, and I don't know that we've ever seen the true Barack Obama. I don't even know that Larry Sinclair has seen the true Barack Obama. Uh, but uh, Barack Obama, his entire past has been shrouded in mystery, and the way he is presented to the American public has always been very carefully orchestrated and massaged. And when he was up there speaking on stage, uh, I just felt like, you know, Barack Obama had never even left Washington, D.C. And let's be honest, I don't really think he has. I think that uh, the entire time that Donald Trump was in office, he was operating his own shadow government in the uh, in the D.C. beltway. And then the entire time Joe Biden's been in office, Barack Obama has been dictating policy, perhaps through intermediaries like Valerie Jarrett. And, and you know, I want to emphasize the actor thing because i can't remember the actor's name i'm looking at him right now uh but he talked about coaching uh barack obama and they sound and look a lot alike i mean they the cadence of that actor and, and the voice it, it you know it, it's very clear that there were at least vocal and cadence lessons from that actor and he is absolutely that you know groomed individual that has honed into the craft Let's talk about the elephant in the room that no one seems to be talking about, even though it's gigantic. They rolled Joe Biden out night one. Traditionally, it would have been the last night passing the torch full on, you know, right, you know, president of the United States to the vice president that's going to be there. I, I, I assume that's what happened, Clinton Gore 2000. Correct me if I'm wrong, everybody. It was two plus decades ago. Not only did that not happen, they ushered him out of the state. <laughs> mm -hmm. he's nowhere he's not even around for the d and it's not like he's doing his job it's not like they, he's going for some diplomacy or having some talks anywhere they just didn't want him anywhere near the dnc that's pretty wild zach yeah yeah i, I think that that was uh i think that was kind of a slight to joe biden first of all uh you know they put him last on the first night of the dnc that is totally not standard certainly trotting joe biden out after 7 p.m is always a dangerous proposition because the man he's probably got sundowners uh, he's in the throes of uh, dementia or alzheimer's allegedly and so things get more difficult for him as he gets uh, later in the day but I think the only reason he was as successful in that speech as he was, and I'm not really giving him a win here, uh, is because a large portion of that speech was him waiting for people to stop clapping. Uh, the other portions of that speech were made up of what you said earlier, statements that he has made over and over and over again, each and every one of them having been widely debunked. So Joe Biden was humiliated on that first night of the DNC uh, likely because he did not want to leave the office of the presidency. He wanted to go ahead and run again, even if it meant that he was going to lose. He wanted the opportunity to remain in power, and he was pushed out by Kamala Harris, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, probably the Obamas as well. Uh, so I don't think Joe Biden went willingly, and I think that they knew that if they put him on that first night uh, as the last speaker on that night, that it would send a message to the American people uh, that Joe Biden was done, uh, all right? And uh, also it told him that they didn't respect him enough to allow him to pass that torch on the final night of the DNC. Even more than that, Jason, Kamala Harris made a surprise appearance earlier in the evening, okay? N not That never happens. Like the the uh, the nominee always comes out last. It's like this grand uh, pr uh, 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 procession leading to that point. But she came out before Joe Biden did, 
And uh, she spoke for a few minutes and kind of, oh, hey, guess what, America? I'm the new boss in town. Uh, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I'm probably going to be running things for the next couple months anyways. So don't you worry about it. Even if she's on the campaign trail, she's a little bit more cogent as Joe Scarborough might say, than Joe Biden is because Joe Biden's just going to be sitting on a beach in Rehoboth, okay? Joe Biden's not going to be running anything for the next couple of months. And uh, I really hope that we don't face any major crises or catastrophes because uh, I just don't know who is going to be at the wheel of this vehicle at this point. Well, who has been at, at the wheel of yeah. this vehicle? And, and, you know, Pelosi, even when she was discussing Joe Biden kind of getting moved out, it wasn't him or his policies it was the campaign i was concerned and she's slurring her speech she's yeah. had you know low level dementia for years and years and years now the actor i was referring to and everybody should look this up is harry lennox harry lennox oh, yeah. barack obama you want to see what an actor he is that's it zach we got about a minute left in the broadcast let everybody know how they can check your stuff out and of course support your work well, thank you, Jason, as always, for having me. I love hanging out with you here on Making Sense of the Madness. I am live on my channel, Red Pill 78, on Rumble and many other platforms, uh, Monday through Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern, Red Pill News. And then on Friday and Saturday nights, uh, I have a call-in show with uh, guests that I interview from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern. I'm also on Badlands Media, Mondays at 10.30 for Baseless Conspiracies, Wednesdays at 9 for Altered State, and Thursdays at 4 for taking it back and uh, of course always here every wednesday with you you're a busy man we thank you for your time and we will see you next week my friend and we will see you guys right here on this network patriot.tv monday through friday it is where the truth lives and folks you know a lot of people come at me they think i'm some sort of fanboy for the right no to me, it's not about right or left. It is always about right and wrong. I absolutely love you guys. We'll see you on the flip side.